Dr. Nick here with Rich Roll. You know, it's really exciting to hear a, a story of yours, how you met Rip, uh, or you were in similar circles years ago. You were both fairly young, and you were a competitive swimmer, that is, mm -hmm. at, at Stanford. So tell me a little bit about what brought you to how to improve your maximum performance, particularly in ultra marathons. Mm -hmm. With plant-based nutrition, you mean? Yes. It was a, you know, it was a, it was an evolution over a couple of years, but you know, I basically started experimenting with plant-based nutrition when I was 40. Uh, it was after a health scare. I was 50 pounds overweight, depressed, wow. unenthusiastic about my life, like a classic couch potato. Even though I'd been a swimmer at Stanford right. in college at age 40, I bore no resemblance to that individual anymore. And I had, a, I had a scare where I thought I was uh, on the precipice of having a heart attack. And that's what kind of led me into trying to find a new way of living and eating and being. Uh, and that was not an overnight journey or process either. But ultimately, I discovered that plant-based nutrition was the thing that really agreed with me in a profound way and revitalized me and gave me not only uh, a new lease on, on health, but a new lease on life. And, and with that came... Uh, uh, a revitalization that actually enthused me about fitness and exercising again and that led me into ultra endurance and that's how the story began. Rich, you've got muscle density on you. A lot of vegetarians don't uh, generally carry a, you know, that added muscle. And uh, Tell me about your uh, pre-competition uh, preparation and what kind of distances do you enjoy uh, covering in, in your competitions? Um, so my training when I'm in heavy training for an event, I do ultra distance triathlons, um, can ramp up to anywhere between 20, 25 hours, 30 hours a week. So it almost wow. becomes like a job. Uh, very intense uh, amount of training that involves a tremendous amount of cycling, running and swimming. Um, a typical, what was the second part of the question? Well, what do you do? What, what kind of foods do you eat? How do you prepare your body to accomplish uh, rather in human feats? I mean, it's, it's certainly a trying right. on the body. So, so the events that I specialize in are like double Ironman distance triathlons, 320 miles, multiple day, you know, out for 10 hours a day, killing it. Uh, and, and in order to kind of fuel for that, um, I try to stick to whole foods. So when I'm on long rides, it's bananas, it's dates, it's coconut water. If I'm doing any kind of... Do you um, carry them with you when you're on the yeah, actual I carry, ride? I carry, mm -hmm. you know, but then I'll stop and replenish because it can only carry so much. Um, I start the day with a very nutrient-dense Vitamix smoothie that's packed with dark leafy greens and beets and beetroots and superfoods like spirulina and hemp seeds and ground flax seeds and chia seeds and berries and a lot of fruit, a lot of carbs. I have a very high carbohydrate intake. Um, a but lot they're all of, natural carbs. Yeah, You're yeah. not pouring in sugar Potatoes, into this. quinoa, lentils, yeah. tons of beans, you know, round the clock. I have a tremendous appetite. I eat a lot of food. Uh, I've been doing this for 10 years, and, and, and I'm sure, like yourself, you would agree, I've never had any problem uh, building or maintaining lean muscle mass. Exactly. So what would you say if you were to, say, revert back to the early, say, American diet or even a paleo or a keto diet, do you think your performance would be as good as it is now? Or uh, have you had any experience with uh, that kind of intensity of training to uh, know there's a difference in animal-based versus plant-based protein? Well, when I was competing at Stanford, I mean, I was world ranked in swimming. I was pretty good. But I was eating a standard American diet, uh, yeah. and plant-based nutrition is what really gave me this new lease on life. And, and a lot of people say, oh, well, you succeeded athletically despite only eating plants. Uh, what if you were eating this way or that way? And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, I believe it is how I was able to do what I've been able to do. Uh, it's allowed my body to repair itself, to recover. Uh, in a very expedited fashion and anybody who's an athlete knows that the holy grail of athletic performance is uh, expediting your recovery. The faster you can recover in between your training, the harder you can train, the further you can go, the less likely you are to get ill or to overtrain or to get injured and when you protract that out over the course of a season or a number of years, you see tremendous gains. As for other dietary protocols, I can't speak to them because I haven't, I, I haven't experimented with keto, I'm not paleo, um, so I don't have direct experience with that, but I can tell you that eating plant-based, there's no reason for me to, to not do it anyway. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's working so well for me. I am still at the weight that I was in in high school, I'm 50, I can still go out and kill it, and 
train and race with the best of them. So I don't see any reason to veer off of what is working for me. Yeah, Carl Lewis, uh, arguably one of the world's fastest men in history, uh, had entered his fourth uh, Olympics, which is a 16-year span. And uh, prior, he was on a typical diet, and yet uh, John McDougall had uh, reached him, or vice versa, Carl Lewis had found out about John McDougall's plant-based, whole food, starch-based diet. And Carl Lewis broke his own world records at the time when, at his oldest, when he shouldn't have been able to break his own records at his age. And that's pretty inspiring to me to think about that because I, I continue to break my own world records in strength and endurance. And um, it, it, it's interesting if you think of uh, Michael Phelps, who you know brags how he goes to McDonald's, I guess it is. And just imagine if he were to come back for another Olympics on, on a plant-based diet, I, I'll bet you he could actually probably, again, uh, pull those uh, gold medals. Uh, so with elite athletes, it's it's one thing. And then your average person day to day who's a weekend athlete, um, regardless, there's always this argument, oh, without enough animal protein, you're not going to be able to perform. It's absolute malarkey. It is the biggest misconception uh, with respect to nutrition that's out there right now. I think it's a complete red herring, non-argument, this idea that you have to get your protein needs met by animal products, it makes no sense. I mean, I wish the word protein didn't even exist because what we're really talking about is amino acids and specifically the nine essential amino acids that your body cannot uh, synthesize on its own and needs to get from food sources. These nine essential amino acids are found in copious amounts throughout the plant kingdom. It's how the uh, animals get them that, w that people eat to get them. So you're just eating lower on the food chain. And but in truth, uh, I, don't, I don't think it makes any difference. And I think most people, uh, especially non-athletes, are eating two to five times their, their recommended daily allowance of protein. This is not healthy. It's actually making them sick. And it's to, affecting my, their joints, to my knowledge, their there's, no, yeah, there's no study that I'm aware of that suggests that eating excess amounts of protein leads to enhanced athletic performance. In fact, all the evidence is to the contrary. And there's no doctors that are treating patients for a protein deficiency. It just doesn't exist. It is the wrong question to be asking. Unfortunately, the marketing interests are so powerful, they have us brainwashed and, and, and having us believe that we need, you know, basically to inhale a gigantic protein smoothie within moments of waking up in the morning, or we're not gonna be able to inhale air in and out of our lungs. And it's it's just, it's not a healthy message. It's, uh, it's ill-informed and it's making people sick. 